So last week we talked about the first, uh, I was going to say about 14 and a half minutes or so of Dog Pack's first video uh, alleging that Mr. Beast uh, fakes videos um, and some other some other claims as well. I'll leave that video in the card and also down in the description for those who wish to watch it. But we're going to be continuing for the rest of that first, uh, uh, or thoughts on the rest of that first video and some of the claims, some of which has been illegal lotteries, uh, really, really dicey uh, marketing practices. Um, and also uh, very quick updated news because I know this is semi older news um, that I watched a video this morning that wasn't ideal for Mr. Beast because he is combining and he is uh, collaborating with KSI and Logan Paul uh, who are known for marketing to children as well uh, but also especially Logan specifically you know not exactly known for not being doing things that are perceived not as scams is what i'll say um so is that a good brand decision from mr beast or is he just trying to cash in on uh, the potential downfall the controversy the issues uh, that dog pat has brought up but also what has come out of the woodwork since then um, but specifically focusing on uh, the dog pat video uh, today we're going to be showing more some serious claims that Dog Pat made in his first video claiming that Mr. Beast ran fake or illegal lotteries. Uh, within Dog Pack's video, uh, he shows that the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, um, defines a lottery as three things require three things. So A, a prize, something of value, B, a chance, uh, a way, a random chance of someone winning it, and a, a, a way, and then number C, a way of someone doing something or paying into the ability to then win uh, the said prize, right? To run a sweepstakes or a competition, you need to remove, allegedly, uh, one of the above situations from taking place. Now, Dog Pat also shows a set of clips from Mr. Beast's 40 million uh, special live stream where he claims that illegal lotteries took place. I'm unsure personally uh, if this is a matter as I'm uh, whether it's not an illegal lottery or not, but purely showcasing the underhand fear of missing out marketing tactics uh, that was used uh, to basically hoodlink uh, either young children or their parents specifically into buying um, the scammy or very shitty things to do. Um, so buying more merch and really boosting those numbers uh, specifically. And I will leave Dog Pack's video down below because uh, there was a lot more evidence than I'm going to specifically talk about in this video um, because I just want to pick up a couple of bits and talk about them specifically. Alongside also uh, with some manipulating of viewers and claiming uh, that he isn't going to make any money uh, if I keep, keep giving things away. So this... Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away... <laughs> Are we trying to not sell merch? <laughs> came from a point inside the live stream where he was, I guess, implying that he wasn't going to make any money or the, the viewers should feel sorry for him uh, because he wasn't going to make any money because he was giving away PlayStations. He was giving away bundles of cash. He was giving away uh, etc. prizes, iPhones, etc. He's This has been a notorious way on YouTube for a very long time where you can quote-unquote buy subscribers without technically buying subscribers because buying subscribers is against youtube terms of service however if you say for example uh will happen to you know spend lots of money on new phones and just so happen to say uh you know subscribe uh, i will be giving away these phones to people who subscribe in the next 24 hours or something along those lines you would have an influx of subs that you can then grow your channel from and you've bought some items that are normally quite well priced like high priced items that would be unaffordable for your children audience and you're you're now buying them in exchange for subscribers so that's buying subscribers right uh, i'm sure you're smart enough to understand and and this is the problem and there has been some alleged uh, and there's been a lot of evidence in that in the dog pack uh, video as well later on that says well you didn't send it you know the people who bought the merch didn't get money when you said they would they didn't get a playstation and they said they would now this might be a minority 
but there is evidence online and there is evidence there that says well no you said one thing and then you didn't do that so at worst that's disingenuous at most that's false advertising so um, so at best what he's doing by creating these illegal lotteries or this kind of prize uh, or money uh, within the uh, sales of his merchandise he's basically getting children hooked on gambling or at least promoting or showcasing uh, gambling to children dog pack also claims there's a lot of comments and etc that they didn't as i said they didn't get their money uh specifically with one of the crew uh, signing mb which is notoriously known as mr beast's signature followed by his own name now this of course is a very shitty thing to do but also would be classed as false advertising because if you're building a parasocial relationship with a audience and they believe that you are personally going to sign that so it holds inherent value uh, that you are doing it for that person because you have a parasocial relationship with the quote amazing mr beast or amazing jimmy etc then by one of your crew which actually t t i guess the counter argument could say well it said it in the in the terms and conditions when you uh, bought it but that's still an unfair comparison because you should say in your marketing that it will be signed by one of the crew not by mr beast necessarily specifically you might get lucky and you might get one that was signed but it is false advertising because if you're saying they will all be signed by the crew and they'll all and everyone will do their own signatures and then that ends up not being true which there has been video evidence shown to be the case that is false advertising. That's the definition of false advertising. And as we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about Feastables, you know, Mr. Beast isn't exactly immune to false advertising. Now, this might be mistakes and these might be things that fall through the cracks when you're running that big of a thing. Sure, fine. But that doesn't change the false advertising. That doesn't change the damage, quote unquote, that was done by him doing that. There's also a lot more uh, that Dogpat shares. As I said, I'll leave the video down in the description. I would recommend you watch it if you're more interested. But a key point I wanted to share was in when Mr. Beast launched his chocolate bar brand, A, he sold into the nostalgia of the mom and dad uh, that were potentially going to be asked by their child when they're next to Walmart or etc. Uh, to buy, quote-unquote, the YouTuber chocolate bar um, because everyone grew up or a large percentage of us grew up with charlie and the chocolate factory which was his launch one of his launch videos or one of his launch ideas for the chocolate bar now that's smart on its own however it's kind of questionable because of how he went about doing it and the logistics of it and the fact that he was going to put a golden ticket it's a good idea it works in marketing it gives large fear of missing out it, it's great it means but the the byproduct is because you're marketing to children a you're going to get them hooked on gambling B, allegedly, it just so happened to be a, a YouTuber with 767,000 uh, subscribers as of, I believe it was January 22, happened to get a golden ticket. And even in the video, I think it was the the um, YouTuber's partner said, oh my God, Mr. Beast had chosen us to be in the, in the um, chocolate factory video, which was to basically be in a competition to then win the chocolate factory that Mr. Beast used for the video. Or I think it was half a million or something like that because of the running costs of the chocolate factory. Um, that was also endorsed by Gordon Ramsay, etc, etc, etc. So adding more credibility, I suppose you could say, uh, to the chocolate and the fact that it was healthy. Um, and, you know, there's been lots of controversy or lots of questions around that as well. But, you know, I don't personally think... And, and, and it's possible that... And I'm trying to give B Mr. Beast the benefit of the doubt here. And I think that it's fair to say that, you know, you probably want one or two really, really good characters to help in your video. If, if you're doing the golden ticket principle to uh, help with your content, and that's a marketing strategy for Feastable, sure. Then you probably want one or two YouTubers that are probably really charismatic and really good on camera to potentially carry, carry that entertainment value. But why didn't he just invite those people and then say we're going and then and then bring say it, say for example there was only five people or ten people or however many it was that you could put in the video? Why didn't you just then say, okay, cool, we're going to invite two or three, but then we're going to run a competition for the other slots, and then you could do the golden ticket and so on. But again, I still question the 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 moral uh, reality of 
marketing to children that way you have a chance to win the golden ticket if you buy more chocolate because that's how it was perceived now okay you could make the argument to say that willy wonka started this issue or started this concern but again i that's a film and that's arguably fictional and it's kind of deliberately been talked about to be taken with a pinch of salt mr beast did this in reality of course he did because it makes money and it's a great idea but also there's been some controversies around him saying well it's really really healthy when he first launched it and has you know it was better than hershey's which was their main product provider and now it's ended up having to be shifted to be worse now he has to be fair to jimmy talked about this at length where he said well it wasn't really selling people weren't as interested etc 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 but arguably i would say that's because you sold a false a false promise right if you're saying oh it's healthy and it's really good and it's better for you da, 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 da. and then you know when that hype dies down and when it's known that you sell chocolate does that mean that it's necessarily going to mean that chocolate bars and there's also conversations around like random chance to win 5k or be in a video etc to help uh walmart stores or allegedly help walmart stores uh kind of make sure that feastables is area of the chocolate aisle was really really great now there's also there's been a lot of kind of controversy around this as well because he's also been notoriously known for talking about the obesity problem talking about the issues with people eating too much chocolate right and then he launches a chocolate brand and and now what it's looking like at the moment anyway so he's launching a lunchables uh, competitor with uh, logan paul and ksi as well as big two other massive creators whose audiences are all children right so the market is very clearly for parents to buy them for their children but also massive audiences combining and is jimmy potentially i as i said is he did he always have these morals is he got to a size where he's just purely looking at how do i generate as much revenue as possible to pay for all of the things i do in my videos because he's got to have high level of production cost he's got to have lots of staff etc but you know i think for me you've got to ask yourself what is about what what is the right thing to do rather than what is the most profitable thing to do i think and for me for a longevity point of view and a long uh, a long tail or a long build of a brand especially when something like this when you grow to this size you can have issues like this and and this is to be honest this is actually some of the smaller issues that we're going to talk about related to mr beast because as i said i'm going to cover everything um but i want to do it in the order that it came out in and do it properly that's why it's not going to be current a little bit more about a shady practice i've shared my views um specifically on the chocolate brand and and, and how he went about doing that i'd love to hear what you think down below but dropout Pat also shows a video where a winner uh, wins one million dollars as a giveaway and claims he was rushed to spend it now uh, to, uh, he won in another video now this could be jimmy's fault this could also be the bigger question around the game when it comes to creating clickable titles uh, because a i helped a subscriber or i let a subscriber spend a million pounds of my money less clickable than uh, this guy only has 24 hours to spend one million dollars the problems that come is that he felt that he's come out since and said that he was rushed he felt like he you know couldn't really use the money or, or, or use the money to change his life as much as it could have done if he had obviously been given the time there was also some kind of questionable practices regarding you know paperwork that was signed related to cars and etc and it quote unquote being forced into it because again you've only got 24 hours so what you're gonna you've got to spend a million pounds or dollars or etc in that time so you're gonna waste time reading a contract what's that contract agreeing you to etc and there's some of the issues you know there was also some alleged claims that jimmy never followed up when it came to helping him invest or you know they picked the first house rather than the right house uh, and, and things like that and i think uh, i won't go too much into detail because i don't want to take from dog pat's video but it just shows more about the issue regarding the clickable title there's one thing to say about how do we package our videos sure there's another thing saying about is it wrong for the person winning the money now 
this is probably a first world problem. Oh, you've just got a million pounds and you have to spend it in 24 hours. Because that is a good title, right? That is a good clickable title. But it's the, I guess, the question of it could have been a lot better for that person. And you could make the counter argument to say, well, he's just complaining because he didn't think about it or plan it ahead of time. But I guess the question and the reason why Dogpat maybe brought it up is because it's to critique Jimmy's behavior and critique Jimmy's morals and critique Jimmy and how he operates, right? Now, as I said in the previous video, some of what Jimmy does, I personally think is just production, right? Now, you could make the argument to say, well, what here is just that's the game. You have to play the game if his model is, I'm going to spend a million pounds or dollars, right? How many other people are going to do that? How many people have the disposable income or the reality to do that? You know, he notoriously is known for allegedly, you know, going and giving large sums of money to random people as a title because it's clickable, because it gives that wow factor. It gives that um, Mr. Beastification of YouTube. But I remember listening to a Casey Neistat conversation, um, which is, you know, people are... And this will lean into a conversation, uh, another story as well, but people are looking for authenticity now. They're not looking to be sold to. Um, and I saw an article as well talking about the influencer space is becoming harder or the creator space is becoming harder because people want truth. Uh, I guess this leans into an extent as well about the lack of trust in mainstream media as well. But as I said, I think that if you are looking at getting into this space and you are looking to uh, create content, potentially get brand deals, etc., be authentic to yourself, right? Don't necessarily do, and there's certain moral things like, like titles and such that I'll only go so far with because I disagree with the concept of creating a title that has a negative knock-on effect to the actual outcome of the video so in the million uh, million dollars case uh, in 24 hours yes you're giving this guy loads of money and yes that's a great thing but actually are you hurting him by rushing him through it are you hurting how good it could be or how good it would have been and would he actually have been better off arguably because if he's locked into contracts that end up costing him more money over the long term if actually and we don't know this we don't actually know how much money in cash necessarily or we could have burnt the cash right and still be and still be uh, let's say he leased the cards he could be still stung with those uh, monthly payment costs without having a pot of money to pay for them so this is how you can potentially or this is how that reality and i'm not saying any of this is true but this could be a reality where actually the person who won a million pounds in a video or million dollars in a video is worse off because of Jimmy's actions uh, long term as well. But arguably, is Jimmy busy? Is is Jimmy too busy to uh, whether he does care or actually do anything about it to to uh, right that wrong potentially? But that covers the first dog pack video. What do you think about uh, some of Mr. Beast's behaviour? Some of his marketing uh, kind of tactics are they shady? Are they shitty? You know. Uh, anything I touched on in this video, let me know down below.